Greetings, everybody. My name is Jeremy Shelton from the Freshwater Research Center, and I'm going to be speaking about mobilizing freshwater biodiversity data for South African rivers. I'll start off by touching on some of the successes of the project thus far, building on what Helen has already told you about the freshwater biodiversity information system development. We'll be having a look at the key data users and providers of the platform, touching on some of the main lessons learned thus far and ending off looking into the future of where we are looking to expand the platform. But to start off with, what exactly is data mobilization? Mobilization is a word that's often used in military and war, the organization of all resources of a nation for the support of a military effort, according to Encyclopedia Britannica. But in our case, this definition could be adapted to the organization of all resources of a nation for support of a freshwater conservation effort. Mobilization in the freshwater data context is really this idea of bringing together data from a wide range of sources into the same place and format, and thereby allowing us to tap into the patterns, the stories held deep within those data, which should support smarter management and decision making. And that's really what the freshwater biodiversity information system is all about. So what have been some of the main successes of the project thus far? Data mobilization to date has focused on rivers and primary data include data that have been manually collated from a variety of different sources and served through the platform. Database records total about 260,000 and that would include records from databases like Cape Nature's State of Biodiversity database. Scientific articles, about 27,000 records uploaded from there. Published reports and theses, over 80,000. And lots, but not least, unpublished data shared with us from, uh, by experts who have personal data collections, for example. But the platform also serves data from link-based databases. For example, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility through which an extra 100,000 plus records are being served. So that leads um, to date a total of just over half a million freshwater biodiversity data records being served through the FBIS, leading to this being the most accessible and most um, extensive freshwater biodiversity data resource in South Africa to date. The data are packaged by modules, including fish, invertebrates, adult odonates, and algae. The vast majority of the data, about two thirds being aquatic invertebrates, but also substantial quantities of fish and uh, adult odonate data, and a smaller proportion of algae data. Another success has been improving access to the data, not only the data themselves, but also the, the trends lying within the data. With just a few clicks of the button in less than a minute, I was able to look at all 58,000 records uh, spread out over time, plotted by conservation status of freshwater fish in South Africa. And for me, as a freshwater fish biologist, that kind of information is just invaluable for conservation planning. We've also seen a reinvigoration of the local freshwater data community. Um, individuals across a range of different organizations operating within the freshwater data space, really coming together, collaborating more around the central focal point of the freshwater biodiversity information system. And that leads me on to the data users and providers, the lifeblood of FBIS. Uh, the user uh, and provider engagement thus far has been really good. We've seen 352 users register from, five, from 165 different organizations across South Africa. We've seen thousands of data uploads so far um, and a lot of data downloads as well. And the FBIS development has really tried to cater for a range of different um, uh, end users, right the way through from researchers and uh, consultants, doing environmental impact assessments um, up to uh, national uh, water resource managers and conservation planning as well. We've adopted the philosophy of more carrot less stick by providing really easy to use data upload forms. In this case on the left, we've mimicked the SAS uh, 
uh, field template uh, with FBIS, making it really easy for users to upload their, their biomonitoring data directly into the FBIS, and also providing um, data visualizations and graphs that can be easily downloaded and used straight away into reports, cutting down time uh, needed. And this has really stimulated a lot more uh, data interaction. Uh, end users looking for more detailed data can download raw data files as well, uh, accessing all the different attributes associated with each data point. I've split the lessons learned thus far into people, platform, data, and sustainability. On the people front, we realized early on the value in the community development approach. What I mean by that is involving the community, not only in the conceptualization of what we wanted to build, but also in an iterative way, feeding back um, in each phase of platform development. Um, and, this, and in this process, collaborations and relationships with different organizations and individuals have proved invaluable. We also learned that it's impossible to please everyone with one platform um, and we can't do everything. And therefore we've needed to uh, identify priorities and the user community has really helped us identify what are the top priorities uh, for freshwater data in South Africa to make sure we develop those properly and develop those first. Onto the platform, um, we've found it really beneficial working with a developer that's had prior ecological uh, experience and expertise. Um, we found that building transparently and transferably and in an agile and adaptable way has really made a big difference. It allows us to adjust the assessment adjust the system really easily when that's needed, but also to transfer it potentially to other countries and other parts of the world, uh, as has been done recently in a collaborative project funded by the JRS as well with Rwanda to deploy an instance of the FBIS in that country and develop the Rwanda Biodiversity Information System. Again, just to emphasize this iterative approach with multiple opportunities of users to feed back into the platform has a really allowed us not only to develop something that really meets the user needs, but also something that the users feel invested in. In terms of data, we've become aware, made aware of how much time and resources it takes to mobilize data, but also of how many data are sadly lost through missing information, especially in historical data, where often coordinates or dates are missing. And these are the data that are so important for tracking long-term change in biodiversity. We've also um, learned the importance of using international data standards, for example, GBIF taxonomy backbone and accompanying each and every data point with good metadata. So if there are any errors, it's easy to trace the data back to their source. Sustainability has been an ongoing, through, an ongoing theme through, throughout the project. Um, and we've really focused on making sure we're able to maintain and grow the platform beyond this JRS uh, grant that we're using at present. Um, we've been making an effort to reduce developer reliance and also to embed the platform into national decision-making pipelines um, and therefore make it indispensable to freshwater decision-making in South Africa. There's been a strong focus now and in the future on training of data users and providers throughout South Africa and to continually foster key institutional relationships. To end off on, what have we done so far in this platform and where are we looking to go with it? Well, the initial focus, as Helen explained, has been on rivers, serving data through fish, aquatic invertebrates, adult odonate and algae modules through a web, a web instance of this data platform to um, a range of different end users. But moving forward, um, it's very exciting that we're gonna be expanding to the platform to wetlands as well, um, serving fish, invertebrate and algae data for wetlands in South Africa, but also developing three new modules, frogs, plants, and an abiotic model module that'll include among other things, thermal data for insights into climate change. We'll be adding a mobile app that'll act in companion with the web instance of FBIS, allowing for data, greater data flow, particularly field data uploads. 
and we'll be looking in a more focused way at end users and working with these national decision support tools, the National Biodiversity Assessment, the DWS River Ecosystem Monitoring Program, the IUCN Red List Assessments, and also the DFFE Environmental Impact Assessment Screening Tool to make sure that uh, the, the data from this platform are really making a difference at this international conservation and management level. So in an upcoming talk, Mohamed Kiji is going to be telling you a little bit more about how FBIS data are being used in the screening tool. And Kate Snadden is going to be telling you more about how the FBIS is being expanded to wetlands. That's it from me. Thanks very much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the session.